Assalamu alaikum. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for being so courageous and staying till this late hour. I uh, really appreciate that. So um, I would like to, to talk to you about something. It's not a grand scheme. We're not going to talk about supercomputers and fantastic things that we can do on InfiniBand. This is great, fantastic things that we're not going to do here. And I'm going to, to tell you a little bit more why. Uh, I hail from a country which is called Kyrgyzstan. So Kyrgyzstan is a small landlocked country in Central Asia. Uh, not a lot of resources, not a lot of, uh, I would say, skills, but a lot of ideas. And I come from the American University there, and we are arguably the best university in Central Asia for various reasons. Um, why is it relevant? Well, the first thing is that I'm Arab myself. And the second thing is that we're providing here with a solution that can be repeated. It's repeatable, it's tightly knitted, and it works. So that's really it. Um, the relevance is um, also uh, the fact that, well, it's an e-learning solution. Uh, all the courses that are provided to students are recorded. They can be accessed remotely. Uh, and they can be as well um, uh, assessed. So there is a component of quality assurance that can be uh, provided by various uh, organiza organizations, uh, such as uh, foreign universities, foreign to Kyrgyzstan in particular, uh, American universities, and uh, um, one of them being the Bard College. All right, so the overarching vision of this is the following. So we want to reform course delivery to enable learning anywhere at any time and promote self-learning at the student's own pace, which means we record the, the courses and the students can, can uh, actually attend the course at any given moment of day or night. Uh, enable a, f a more flexible learning system that leverages space and collaboration, fitting the new campus and allowing. Uh, so this new campus has been paid for uh, by the US uh, AID, as well as the George uh, Soros Foundation, which is called the Open Society Foundation. And it uh, promotes the idea of being free in the campus, yet being able, so being able to roam around, yet being able to access uh, the, the courses and to follow the courses live. So this is a hybrid solution. It's not just everything is recorded, and it's not just everything is live. But the thing is, my experience as, as a teacher is that all the students do have devices, phones, and laptops, and tablets, etc. And during the course, well, they listen to you a couple of minutes, and then they go back uh, tweeting, or, or, or chatting, or WhatsApping, or what's, et cetera. Well, uh, with this solution, we actually force the student to look at their devices, as we're going to see. Uh, the next element is the integration. So we integrate all these resources uh, to the enterprise systems to enable um, a university-wide resource planning as well as data analytics. And finally, we ensure that this technology becomes an enabler and a commodity in all aspects of the student life. Um, so the strategic initiatives that we, we essentially put uh, in play are the following. Well, a new campus network redesigned to enable converged technology uh, services. Uh, an SAP implementation and business transformation, virtual classroom and virtual course delivery solution, bring your own device uh, policy, essentially that we provide a stipend to all students so that we can buy for them the device that they want and then they, we, we essentially modify those devices to fit the security standards that we have. Um, integrated services university, so with a banking card, that is essentially an identity-based network solution, so we're going to see it. And the new course evaluation policy that allows external organizations to access the systems and look at all the courses uh, as they are recorded. Uh, well, the universal access component uh, here, actually this is an old presentation, but that's fine. The centralized uh, um, uh, authorization, authentication, and accounting system is based on what we call the universal ID, which is um, a, 
a banking card. So in, in Central Asia, in particular in Kyrgyzstan, uh, banking is a big thing. Um, not a lot of people do have access to banking. Um, what we do there is that we provide every student who comes to university with um, a bank card that is linked to, to an international bank account. Uh, that card is also a, a student ID that is branded with, uh, with the UCA uh, a logo and an RFID tag. All that is connected to each other to the MAC address, which is the major access control uh, address, or the devices that has been registered to that particular student. So you have your, your, uh, your, your laptop that has a specific MAC address, and you have your logon, your user ID and password to all the services, and you have the RFID tag. You need all these three things together in order to access all the services at the university on campus. Those services are uh, e-wallet and, uh, and banking services and access to the digital libraries, etc. All that is controlled through that. Outside the campus, obviously, you'll be able to, to access banking. Uh, and uh, we have other plans that I'm going to talk about just later. Um, centralized data, so it's obviously it's an ERP, with the, the ERP of choice is SAP. We centralize everything there. The provisioning for all students as well as all services is done through there. Uh, for uh, students is done through uh, student lifecycle management, for, and this is linked to an RFID module that comes with SAP. The secure network availability, as we saw before in various presentations, it's the uh, a flavor 802.1x, uh, secure VLANs, access control layers. Um, we provide as well quality of service. So essentially, if you want to pay, so the services are free for all students, but if you want to be able to YouTube all day long, you need to pay extra. Well, it doesn't look like this, but that pays a good portion of the, the new changes in this, in this particular uh, uh, campus. And uh, finally, the bring your own device support uh, policy allows us to control the devices that come um, uh, at the university. So it allows a better uh, control and a better monitoring of the resources. The purpose is not only security, although it's existing there. There are no resources, it's not like Duke University that can, uh, or any university that can afford 500 policemen. We can't. So we need to do what we, what we have. And resource virtualization, essentially creating the courses and virtualizing them for all platforms, including so phones, uh, um, uh, tablets of all sorts, and laptops of all sorts, and all operating systems. Uh, this is the example of the universal ID card. This, this girl is, becomes famous, because it's not the first time I'm doing this. Um, so essentially, this is something that exists elsewhere. The, the, uh, the, I would say the un uniqueness, first, it's the first in Central Asia, that's number one. The second thing is that there is a, a particular algorithm that we developed, which is an identity-based network algorithm that manages, like I said, combines the, these three elements and then hashes them into uh, an elliptic curve digital signature uh, of 512 bits, and then that's what goes onto the network. So essentially, if anything changes, is the signature is going to change, and therefore the login or the access to the service is not going to be provided. So it is foolproof because this is essentially we're using an elliptic curve that has been um, recommended by uh, the CERTICOM and by the the, the national security, the, the United States National Security Organization. Uh, moving quickly, uh, SAP Unified Database, I'm pretty sure that everybody is aware of, of the, the virtues of this. The secure network availability, well, that allows us to be more granular in terms of services that are provided to the students. And uh, as an example, um, the, one you are, once you are in class, between 9 o'clock and 5 p.m., you cannot YouTube. You have to go outside the class, and then you'll be able to access YouTube and do whatever you want according to your profile, but as long as you're in class between these two times, uh, it's a, times, a timed access list, you won't be able to do anything like this. Uh, but of course, because we provide a recording of the classes, of all classes, uh, you'll still be able to follow and, uh, and, uh, and be able to pass your exams and understand the courses. Um, finally, the comprehensive e-learning, like I said, it's a, it's a hybrid between a full e-learning solution and an in-person solution. You have both at the same time, and it has been uh, proved to be useful to many students, to people who have family, who have small children, and so on. And finally, this is the overarching architecture. As we see, this is the, the ID 
And uh, the, this is our RFID system, the connection to the uh, radio server, and access to all services. Uh, and that will be the last slide. I hope I was not uh, too, too long. Thank you very much for your attention. And uh, well, good luck.